Welcome to Right Talk with Mike Lee. Tonight is a, we have a different kind of show. I have kind of a partner in crime here, Anthony Wynn, who's, in, who's a friend of mine from the Texas Asian Republican Assembly. And what we what as, as you know on my show, I try we try to bring you a different point of view that may not be as as publicized and often as you think. We we we're more on the conservative side of the house since we're on the Right Talk. But there's one thing that I. I kind of a mantra for my show, I believe is what's good for the black community is good for the community. And in this instance, we're going to be, in this case, in this segment, we're going to be talking about the city council election in Pflugerville. Pflugerville is very important to me because it's really kind of a, a black flight zone in us, in uh, here in Central Texas. It's where uh, the new segregation that's taking place in Austin that they prefer to call, prefer to call gentrification. I call it what it is. What, what's happening is uh, many of the African Americans are, are moving to moving to Pflugerville. It's and a so majority Pflugerville minority community now. They and say. so Pflugerville is very important. I, I, when I first came moved to Austin, I was right on the bus and I saw this. It said Pflugerville. I said that's kind of a strange name. And I happened to have taken German while I was in college, so I thought that's kind of a German name. It's kind mm -hmm. of kind of weird. Sure. All that kind of thing. So, so but you you're running for for the city council. In, in uh, Pflugerville, right? Did yes, you? sir, I am. I'm place running six? for place number six. Is this the first time you ran? Um, I ran a, a short campaign for the special election for seat number two against Jeff Marsh, and uh, uh, he beat me like a bad puppy that time. Did he beat the brakes off of you? He did, in fact. Now we're good friends, though. But you backed him more? I backed him after that. I had the one question I had is, as you, as you may know, I, I work for what possessed you to run? I just wonder. I call. I call. I call people who run for office. I call them running types. I'm not a running type. I'm kind of. I'm more like a working type. You're obviously a running type. You ran for special election. Yes, what sir. Made, I am. What made you want to run for city council? Not for Google. I mean for city council. For the city council. Okay. Well, the thing is that uh, I'm retired now, and I have the time to devote to my community. And having lived there for three or four years, I have the, uh, I have recognized that there are some needs that I can successfully fill, some, some challenges that I want to resolve within the city. And uh, my campaign is specifically on safety and business and infrastructure, the things that we really need to grow our community in a responsible manner in a safe manner and a sustainable manner. Now our city council now is doing a very good job and uh, I want to see it continued. I don't want to see us go off track. So what, um, what's your vision of the city? Right now when I look <coughs> at the people in Pflugerville there is a good majority that likes the country feel, the the green space, the farmland, and then there's another that likes the growth, all the new businesses and stores and restaurants, and want that to continue. But there's a lot of people that like the uh, the bedroom community. How do you see the future of Pflugerville um, in that respect? Which which side of sure, that do Anthony? You, see? you know, the community is going to continue to grow. Uh, the only way we're going to stop the growth is to stifle the community. Stop importing businesses, stop letting people move into the community. And that's just not going to happen. We're the 98th safest city in the United States and the 12th best place to live. And those are very important. People recognize that. And you've got the flight from Austin. As you alluded to, we were a bedroom community for a long time. But now Pflugerville is a city in its own right. Pflugerville is growing up. We're bordering 60,000 people now. We've got major businesses coming in. I'm very proud to have been a part of bringing some of those businesses in as a director of the Community Development Corporation. What are some of those businesses? Well, recently we have started to bring in technological hubs, uh, uh, 3D printing. First we brought in EOS, which is a manufacturer of 3D printing machines. Uh, shortly thereafter, I believe it was uh, the end of last year, start of this year, 
we brought in another company that was related to Alcoa, and what they do is metal fabrication mm -hmm. using 3D machines, which they purchase from EOS. And just very recently, there's another company that's moving in, has not done it yet, but they work directly with the other firm from Alcoa, except for they work in plastics and fiber. Okay, so these, these companies are working that kind of thing. Yes, and we're building that community very successfully, and it's bringing in funds. We have just gotten uh, about halfway through now, actually, not just gotten started, but Living Spaces has a 500,000 square foot uh, warehouse and display space. Yep, I live almost right across the street and they got the four walls almost all up. It's That's amazing. exactly right. And because of the way we wrote the contracts with them, when they ship furniture out from that warehouse, we'll get tax dollars. we get every bit of the sales tax dollars from those shipments, sales within the state of Texas. And I am very proud to say that I just signed paperwork uh, related to the Costco deal. And that hasn't come to fruition yet, but we have high expectations of that actually happening. And that's going to bring a major amount of money to How the community. How has you played a role in, in, the, in these various things? What was your role in these Well, sir, I'm, uh, I'm an, on the board of directors of the Pflugerville Community Development Corporation. And I'm also the treasurer of that corporation. So my role, actually the role of the board of directors is to either approve or send back for revision what is done by the economic development staff. For the city? For the, well, PCDC is a separate corporation. It's um, responsible to the city of Pflugerville for our elected officials, obviously. Mm -hmm. The city approves the board of directors for the corporation for PCDC. Yeah, it's, it's a quasi-government entity. Yes. They collect a half cent penny from all the sales That's in the city correct. to offer economic incentives for businesses to come in and, and develop. Yeah. So I always think of them as a shark tank for the city. People pitch their business, and then the board, which he, Victor sits on, decides, is this a good business to give some type of tax incentive so or break? So you think sort of a filter, so to speak? Well, we go out and uh, we recruit businesses from all over the country. As a matter of fact, some yes, from is. all over the world. We solicit them, yes, because we want, excuse me, we want to bring primary jobs, good, creative, strong jobs to our community. And that's exactly what PC do, PCDC does. We brought in almost 800 jobs this year. I used to report five, it's now up to 800. And some $50 million or more of investments into our community. And we don't throw money at companies. Uh, that's not our function. And we do not give tax incentive. That's a city function. What we do, uh, a lot of times is we'll provide infrastructure to make sure that the business can come in and go right to work. And sometimes we've actually lost good businesses because we just didn't have that right little bit of infrastructure ready. So we're always careful about that. Now if we do offer a dollar incentive, then we set milestones that the company has to meet over a number of years. For mm -hmm. instance, you have to hire 50 new employees. You have to, the second year, maintain those 50 and hire 25 more. So when you give incentives, it has to make economic sense. Yes. We have to have a really good return on investment before we do that. And it's a win-win because our community needs those jobs. We need the sales tax that comes in from them. And the businesses need our assistance to get in there sometimes. Now, your opponent, uh, Mr. McDonald, um, has suggested that businesses want to come here. We don't have to beg them to come. We don't have to give them all these incentives. And so he's suggesting that w we've been too generous in those incentive programs. So what do you say about that? Um, you know, do we not need these incentives anymore? Because I think most people, they don't like giveaways, right? So are these giveaway programs no. or, or what are they? And That's not corporate welfare? Absolutely not. We certainly would, I wouldn't be a <laughs> participant in something like that. I have to tell you right now, I, it just would not happen with me on the board. 
No, we don't throw money at corporations. Um, and you have to remember, we are in Pflugerville in competition with all of the local communities, and some of them that are not local. Um, our place in the environment here, for, as far as the business world goes, is, is an enviable place. People like it. But you can move three miles down the road and be in Round Rock. Mm -hmm. And we have certainly lost businesses over very minor things. Um, and I'm talking about the price of a, a, a square foot of land. You know, somebody else will offer land at a dollar seventy-five, and the best we can make an arrangement for is two and a quarter or two fifty or something like that through our contacts. Well, the business will move a couple of miles away to save that extra money. Just like you go to a different gas station, save two or three cents a gallon, businesses will do that. Now, as my opponent says, we have an excellent environment. We have fantastic parks and trails, and those are big draws for businesses as well. They want their employees to be very, very happy. We have to have the good infrastructure. And that's a big draw. As I alluded to earlier, we will actually, on PCDC, help provide some of that infrastructure, roadways or sewer systems or things like that, in order to entice the business to come in. It's not always, like you say, throwing dollars at them. And once again, we don't do tax incentives. That's not what we do. But we will provide a certain amount of money in order to help that business make the transition. Say we will pay a little bit of money to help them move their employees. Mm -hmm. Or we will, in one particular deal, uh, we had a failed business and we clawed back some of our funds from that failed business mm -hmm. because they couldn't keep up their end of the bargain. Well, what we got back was a lot of furniture. The next mm. company that came along, Got the furniture. we <laughs> used the furniture as the incentive, uh -huh. and they came right in. So when, help, help me understand. When you say we don't do tax incentives, I thought, um, to me, a tax incentive is they pay 100000 in property tax. But we would say, oh, instead of paying one hundred, you only have to pay 50000 for 10 years. Don't you do those kind of deals? No. Or... That's a city. We, we in PCDC don't control the tax rate of the city. We mm -hmm. get half a cent of sales tax revenue from all of the sales tax that's generated in the city of Pflugerville. That's what we get. That's what we have to use. Mm -hmm. We can't say, all right, we're going to give you back tax money because we really don't collect tax money. Do you make recommendations or suggestions to the, city, to the council? Yes, we do. Sometimes we will do that. Or we will go along with their suggestions. There have been a number of occasions where the city has come to us on PCDC and ask for uh, a return of some of the investment that they've made in us. A uh, little bit more of that tax. So if we get a if we get a half cent at PCDC, they may want a tenth of that back to help finance some business that they've recruited. Okay. So so the development corporation itself doesn't approve the tax abatement, it's a city that, that does it. You, you have the half cent that you might be able to help pay for some infrastructure and, yes, and, and different things. That's absolutely correct, Anthony. Okay. We don't, the PCDC is a corporation, we're not a taxing authority, so we can't rebate tax. Now, the, the part of, uh, you said you're running for a position place six? Yes, sir. What area does that cover of Pflugerville? Well, Pflugerville is an at-large city. It's an at-large at city. Currently at 60,000, we're just, in my opinion, verging on that part, uh, that point in our development where we're going to have to start thinking about districting because we are getting many yeah. diverse communities that are pushed out farther from the city center. We're no longer a small, compact little city. We have Falcon Point and Black Hawk and all of these communities around. As we get a little bit bigger and start to push out, 1849 Park and places like that. It used to be small and relatively homogeneous. Yeah, exactly. And now it's become diversified. Yeah. Yes. And now, because of that, you need... Exactly. You know, yes, I think sir. that'll be a good idea. Brown Rock is talking about it because they found in their school board most of the people were in downtown Brown Rock, not on the outskirts. So the outskirts people weren't being 
represented. And, and in Pflugerville, we have 60,000 people, but the affluent areas is kind of north and east, and the poorer areas are all south. And, and yeah, you hate to think that we're segregating, but there is a slight well, separation I say, there. Well, I would say, what we are experiencing right now in Pflugerville is a lot of brand new communities that are being pushed out on the outskirts and even farther as we annex property. And their needs, their desires are a little bit different than the established communities right in the city center. So it's kind of development driven? Yes, yes, I would call it that. And uh, for instance, once we get 1849 Park with uh, you know thousands of extra homes, and that's quite a ways out from the city center. Yeah. Their needs for a community center, a swimming pool, a library, those sort of things are really going to become important to them, where the people downtown will have much different expectations, mm -hmm. for instance, road maintenance and sewers and things like that. So there may be a need to go to the district to, to, in order to address the needs of the people. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We want to be very responsive to the people of Pflugerville. It's, it's very important. Well, one of the things that you have talked about, and ha so has your uh, opponent, was uh, a recreation center, senior recreation yes. center. Um, since both of you guys agree that we probably need to update our, our current one, um, I would like to know how would we fund that? How would we pay for um, such a facility, um, knowing that you know right now our, our tax rates are are the highest in the area, and you know. We're struggling. I can afford to pay it now, but um, I'm worried that I can't retire in Pflugerville if I'm paying right now six to seven thousand dollars a year for property taxes. And I can't imagine in 20 years what I'll be paying. Um, it's, it's kind of a scary thought. And and so so how do you address our property taxes and wanting more things and more amenities and, and paying for that in the future? Yeah, that's a. That's always the balancing act of every community, every growing city is going to be going through those kind of balancing acts. Yes, they held our tax rates flat this year, but mm -hmm. as you yourself noted in the speech to the council, our value of our homes has gone up eight or ten percent. Therefore, is that, is that the, driven by Austin's market? Um, people are fleeing yeah. Austin to come out because, mm -hmm. as I said yeah. earlier, we're one of the best places to live in this country. And people want to come here. And now you have a lot of the green spaces being sold off. Now we're being very careful in Pflugerville to make sure that we retain those green spaces. We've got over 40 miles of trails. <clears throat> we just spent, uh, I think the bond was over $20 million on a, on a new park system, 1849 park. And we need to keep those kind of things going. But at the same time, we have to recognize in a growing city, uh, we have one recreation center. And we have one library. And those things were adequate at the time that we had 20,000 people, maybe 30,000 people, but they are no longer adequate. Uh, and certainly not sufficient for a city of 60,000 people. Uh, not all spending is bad. Now, we are going to have to make some hard decisions. We need to, to get in there and dig through <clears throat> our budgeting process, as Councilman Marsh has been doing directly, to make sure that we're not wasting our money on line items. We have to we have to pay attention to each dollar, mm -hmm. as it were. And each small dollar does matter because they end up being big dollars all the time. We also are gonna have to consider using some bonds, I think, but as the new sales tax comes in from these companies that I've been talking about and through new development from PCDC, you're going to see a lot of extra sales tax, ad valorem taxes coming into the city. And we will be able to use that money to do things like ref refurbishing the recreation center. Look, right now, seniors are the largest growing population portion within the city of Pflugerville, and we need to address those folks. Uh, a lot of them don't have the funds, a lot of them don't have the transportation, a lot of them are simply abandoned by their family. 
And we really need to take care of those folks. That's important, and it's important to me. I'm taking care of my mother right now. She's 86 years old. And her only chance for recreation is to go down to this little recreation center, which is, it devotes one little small room in the community recreation center to seniors. That's all it does. Um, we need to expand that. We need to make it more senior friendly. And at the same time, we need to consider things like the outlying areas where I've been speaking of, where we need more senior centers, more senior recreation opportunities, and more libraries, which I consider to be one of the things that we really, really need to get onto. We have one community library for an entire city of 60,000 people. That's just not enough. We need to work on that. Well, speaking of bonds, and, and Rudy will be here sh shortly, hopefully, but he's advocated working with the county on, on projects. And um, if people don't know, we actually have two county bond proposals in the Travis County, um, about $100 million each, one for roads and one for, for parks. And, um, and so, you know, I, I looked at that. There's really nothing except for resurfacing the soccer field in the Metro East Park, um, changing it to AstroTurf, spending $8 million to redo for, for field. And I'm thinking, you know, with $8 million, we could probably do a lot of good things in Pflugerville. <laughs> so I'm curious, what do you think about those county bonds? And is there any way that the council can work with the county, the city council of Pflugerville, work with the county to try to do some projects that might actually benefit Pflugerville um, versus these big projects that's in the county that I don't know if, if that's a good return on investment, you know, um, spending that kind of money personally, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's a, it's a very timely question. I just now came from a conference called Making Central Texas Work, and a part of it was transportation, but also a large part of it was recognizing that our cities all are interrelated. We have to work together as an entire region rather than just individual cities deciding I need this or I need that without thoughts to interoperability, without thoughts of connecting between, let's say, Round Rock or Leander or wherever. And Pflugerville, we all have to work together with those projects. And the more that we work together, the more we will save because there won't be a duplication of effort. We'll have that planning done. And right now our city council is working with almost every one of the surrounding cities. And we're a part of the CAMPO, the transportation plan. We're a part of decisions that are being made in Austin. And one of them, as you noted, um, Austin is floating this $93 million bond, I think, um, for roads and, and uh, improvements. And very little of it affects our city in Pflugerville. Uh, like you said, it's probably 8 or $10 million. It's not very much. But working together with Austin on these things and working together with our other city partners that's where it's going to pay off and we'll start to see those benefits very soon. I'm, I'm very, actually very, very happy with the way this, our city council is working. So right that's, a, that's a way of the municipalities getting together to leverage their funds. I'm sorry? That's a way of the muni municipalities getting together to leverage their funds. Yes, that's you know, exactly. Service, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't think people realize that there are county parks, there are city parks, there are HOA parks, there are state parks and federal parks. And each one of those levels of government have their own source of funding. And when it comes to doing stuff, and they all have the power to issue bonds, they go and do it, but the county only does it in the county land. They, they won't touch a city property. The city, when they work on a park, they only do it within the city boundaries. They don't touch a county park or a state park, or we don't really have any federal yeah. parks, but they all have their taxing district and in their very focus. often they do not pay attention to what's going on in the, like the county decisions are made by the county commissioners. I know and when I worked uh, in a district attorney's office down in Jefferson County, Texas, I worked in the civil division. At that point I was one of two lawyers who was there. 
and uh, sometimes we would, we would have these disputes between the county and the city of who's going to pick up the dead animals. Is the city going to pick it up or is the county going to pick it up? You're getting mm -hmm. little, little bitty tips like that. Yeah. And yeah. when I was in the... Uh, I know in exactly Germany, what you're talking it about, sir. It used to be Beaumont and Port Arthur, this kind of thing. Yeah. So it's kind of encouraging to hear about municipalities cooperating cooperatively, working together, rather than getting into... Contest about who's gonna what. Well, exactly. I don't want to see a situation where it's us versus them. I, I have 39 years of law enforcement experience under my belt, and far too often I saw it's us versus them yeah. because of a lack of communication and a lack of understanding on the part of both parties. It's just one vote. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and it's all our region, it's all our Texas. Yeah, that's kind of a, a theme that came across at the, at, the, at the breakfast I went to this morning. Where uh, let's see, commissioners of railroad commissioner, uh, environmental quality commission, and one of the other commissioners. They were all talking about the Harvey recovery effort and how a lot of different agencies, state, federal, and local, were working together to get the job done, and how there was a lot of volunteerism going on too. Yes, and that's it. That in a in a disaster situation, that's exceptionally re important. Now, I worked. I don't know how many hurricane uh, recovery operations when I was working for the state of Florida, but it was imperative that everybody work together. Mm -hmm. And there's a something called a national incident management system that's been developed that specifies who has which jobs and which functions and which responsibilities. And all of the police departments are required to undergo that training, all of the fire departments and the emergency services people. Uh, what we need to ensure is that our cities are on board with those so that they know what our individual responsibilities as a city are. Okay, um, let me ask you about a couple development projects that are being proposed by City Council. Uh, we have the Pecan Place on the, I guess, the Western Corridor off of Pecan Street. Yes. Uh, $1.1 billion project, mixed-use type of development. You want to set up a mud and a terrace. Well, that's a fantastic um, project. What, what do you think about that? I think that... On the western corridor of Pflugerville, it's a fairly undeveloped area. It's, uh, it's not in great shape, but bringing in this particular phase development is going to make a wonderful difference for our city. Yeah, it, they're asking for a relatively small amount of money, uh, a small TERS, that's a tax increment reinvestment zone, where they take a portion of the, the taxes from that area and reinvest it into that area. They're asking for a small inner city mud municipal utility district to defer some of the payments, to spread them out over some time. But $1.2 billion is what this developer, or a series of developers, is going to come in with. And this is such a great project because you're going to have houses, multifamily and single family houses. You're gonna have businesses right there in the same area, parking structures. So it's gonna do two things. It's gonna give us housing next to our businesses. And that means people won't be getting up and driving someplace else to go to work. <laughs> they they, they can go commute. right there. They, they can walk mm -hmm. downstairs and go to work. It's fantastic. And they can park their cars right there on the property and they don't have to worry about tying up or getting involved in the traffic jams on our roads. We've, we've got to get people in our city, working in our city, rather than getting up in the morning and getting caught in a traffic jam going to Austin or getting caught in a traffic jam coming home from Round Rock where they work. Mm -hmm. That's part of PCDC's work, is bringing those jobs so that they get to work right here in our city. Are they asking PCDC to, to do, help anything with they, that? or not? It's been discussed at PCDC. They have not come to us for any uh, 
assistance as, as looks like they're just going after the city council to approve the the tourism and the money. there's a there's a lot of things that ha are in the background with that particular project because it is so big and it's a phased development it was actually discussed with the city council not that long ago i think uh probably about a month or two months back yep. mm -hmm. and that decision working out the details is still pending okay well what about the um the last one, about uh, three weeks ago, or maybe it's a month now, the downtown development. Um, they propose spending $2 million to redo the roads and the curves and put the utilities underground. Um, in our last panel, it seemed like most of uh, the other candidates were kind of against it. Um, what, what do you think about that? I think there's a lot to talk about on downtown. What? One of the things that we need to do is stop studying this issue to death. There have been five studies of downtown redevelopment now. That's right. You're president of I'm the downtown. A, yes, I'm president of the Downtown Association of Pflugerville. Now, I don't own a business downtown. I just work with the businesses and the residents trying to make it a better place, a more mm -hmm. family-friendly place. And that's my entire goal in this. Oh, actually, i got one follow-up question. So you're the president, so you're an officer. Uh, do you actually vote? Because I, I heard that you had to be uh, own a business or something to be on the board. And um, there were some questions about how you could be president. But can you clear that up? That you're not own a business. Yeah. I am, I am the president, and I am a non-voting You're non-voting. OK. You got, you I can, be, I can. You're supposed to have a dog in the fight, huh? No, well, HOAs can, are the same setup. The, the voting members have to own property, but the president or vice president or treasurer can be elected by the board, and you don't have to have a voting um, powers, but you still represent the voting people. And that board. is exactly the status that I have. Okay, so you're not voting, no. but you're the president. Well, I came in and I worked with the folks in the downtown area, and uh, we were all quite happy with what was going on and the, and the speed with which things started to happen. And this last year, they elected me as the president of the Downtown Association. But anyway, in that capacity, uh, what we want to see is a vibrant, family-friendly downtown area. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that can be done. Now, you ask about the, uh, the $2 million um, revitalization, revitalization effort. Mm -hmm. It's a start. To get, you've got to start someplace. Now, personally, I would like to see, and I think I've talked to the uh, city manager about this issue, that we need, for instance, signage. It would be nice to know actually where downtown Pflugerville is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually had somebody ask me, where's downtown Pflugerville? And you can't point to a sign that says that. And you, there, might, you might be in it. <laughs> yeah, there isn't one. Now, I'm not saying that we want to build... Uh, a Wild West downtown. We, first of all, downtown Pflugerville burnt to the ground like 1960s. So what little space we have is not sufficient bones to rebuild something like that. But it is the perfect opportunity for us to build the downtown center that we really want for our residents. We can move some of the uh, buildings out, for instance, the city hall, the city hall was great for 30 or 40,000 people, but now we've got people, city employees, scattered all over the count, all over the city, rather. Uh, what they need to do is get that city hall building out of downtown, build a new one, or maybe take over Timmerman School or some other facility like that that's more suitable to it, and use that space for development. I would love to see an open space, a parking area, something like that, or, I mean not a parking area, a park area downtown where our residents can enjoy life. They can stroll along the streets. Hey, Rudy. Come on in, Rudy. Hey, Rudy. What's up, brother? Long time oh, man, no see. I'm about to say, you know, let me hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But to continue, this, this what? is one of my other guests that uh, I've been trying. To, I've been trying to corral Rudy. Rudy and I met. We went about four years ago. Yeah. Wow. On the phone. On the phone. That? On the phone. You invited me That's to the uh, Black Black Lawyers Christian Squad. I can't believe you remember that. I went there. Yeah. <laughs> and then we were on CNN together. Yes, we were. 
and now you're running for city council again. <laughs> yes. I hope they don't pull the dirty tricks on it on you like they did before. Well, you know, I'll say this: having people like yourself supporting you make a difference. Anthony, folks like Victor, that makes a big difference right there as well. Um, I appreciate the sentiment for sure, though, man. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you coming out. This is Rudy Mateer. Rudy Mateer. <laughs> Mateer. Did you say yes. that with a Play question mark? Well, it's a little, <laughs> it's, it's a little uh, difficult to say, like my last name, which is really easy win, but it looks, it let looks me, different. Let me go ahead and get to know you. Where are you from, Rudy? Originally born in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York? And your folks from the Caribbean? My parents are from Haiti. Haiti? So I'm first generation. Okay. Okay. And so we moved down to Texas uh, 32 years ago. And so I grew up in a small old town in North Texas, yeah, Trophy Club, which is by Roanoke, Argyle, Justin. Which pretty much nobody knows until I start mentioning <laughs> South Lake Grapevine and those other areas. They're like, oh, okay. You know, we're, uh, and I came down here for school, and I'm one of those people, you know, you move down here for school, and you just got caught up at UT, and you end up being in the area 20 years okay. later. Yeah, because I think when I first met you, I was, I was on a case. I called you, you at one state agency. Yes. So wow, look at you. Remember that? Yes. Good. Yeah. So I work. So I worked at the um, Department of Aging Disability Services. So that's why right. when you right. see the things that I talk about regarding seniors, medical transportation, community health, et cetera, nursing facilities, that's a big deal to me. And that's why in Pflugerville, you know, it's one of the fastest growing senior populations. We need more senior potential. centers. Uh, well, don't less, get, don't get single family home. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead and get started. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Don't get me started on that. Because, well, you know, what's frustrating is that unless you're really, and, you know, we talked about this before, unless you're involved, you know, in um, Medicare or Medicaid or anything else right there as well, you have your, either your parents involved, your person involved, you don't really know how important these issues are to be addressed. And, I mean, when you're talking about senior care, you're talking about these nursing facilities, I mean, I have seen some facilities here in in the Austin area, and you got the state offices here that are just horrendous, and you can't believe it. And you know, and that's why for me, it was a big passion to go ahead and be able to go ahead and force those cases and go after those people regarding those issues right there. And then what happened is that, and this is why I can't believe you, you have a good memory. Um, once, once the, <laughs> I did a pretty good job enforcing cases. So then after that, the the commissioner called me over to help roll out a Medicaid program and help work with folks because. He had seen, you know, we had some difficult cases, some difficult issues, and I had helped to go ahead and make sure that they were addressed from all sides right there. And I think that's a, probably the biggest thing that, you know, I think that when it comes to state agency and government work in particular, I don't think people appreciate enough that the people who are working in there, those are, they're dedicated. You know, they're dedicated to the cause, and they're really trying to go ahead and, in this case, try to watch out for some of the most vulnerable citizens you have in the state. Hey, Ruth, I have this question for you. What is that you would bring to the council? Because this is not your first time. Right? I know you ran before and you barely lost. I remember. For some reason, I know lost like forty votes. I know about some antics that were pulled on your ATV and all this kind of stuff, right? But what would you bring to the council that is not presently there that would be, that would be different and unique? Well, Mike, I think the biggest thing is this: is that and you've seen it just like when I, you know, we met years ago. I'm a consensus builder. Even if someone, I need to go ahead and work to. Make sure we are able to work together and have a plan and a vision on things. Right now, you have on council, you literally have six different people, six different visions, mm -hmm. and you have you're, you're you don't have you have a strategic plan in place, which they've done a really good job of. You know, we've seen it. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know that. You know, Victor, they have a phenomenal strategic plan, but there's no implementation and there's no orientation regarding getting that done. And it's because there's no consensus. Everyone's going their different ways with that. And you've got to work with people that even if you completely vehemently disagree with them, you've got to listen to what they're going to say. Because you know what? You've got to give them credit because it's their opinion. You may not agree with that, but you're crediting their opinion. But you've got to start and work on those things right there. And that's something that they don't have right now. Is that, isn't that the job of the mayor? <laughs> it kind of used to be when they didn't have a vote, right? He was supposed to be the consensus. And, and, and I think that um, yeah, that's a fair point, especially when he didn't have a vote. You know, it's different. Mm -hmm. So under Mayor Coleman, as opposed to Mayor Gonzalez. That's fair. I, I think that now it's not just on the mayor. It's, mm -hmm. you know, now that he has a vote, I think it's an onus on every member. There's got to be people on there who are willing to work together and bridge those hard backs and do the dirty work. As Mike has talked about before, you know, that's something I'm used to doing. You know, as a, as a lawyer, I'm used to go ahead and, you know, talking to opposing counsel, working on issues and bringing back things. I'm used to having frank discussions. You know, a lot of the things that people will talk about and their concerns are like, well, you know, I don't want to bring bad news or I don't want to hurt someone's feelings, et cetera, right there. You know what? You can do things in a respectful, cordial manner, but you've got to be honest and forthright in what you've got to do. One of the hardest things that I had to decide to do 
in my career was when we had a case over at the Department of Nation Disability Services, and it was dealing with a nursing facility. Now, this nursing facility wasn't doing everything right on the page of the books, but guess what? What I saw in our case itself, we weren't doing everything the right way as well. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that people weren't addressing that aspect, I brought it up to the commissioner. I said, hey, listen, you know, I'm here, you know, you're my client, I'm an advocate for you, et cetera, but I wanted to make sure that you're aware of A, B, C, and D's happening right here, so you know your full options. Mm -hmm. And he came back and looked at me and he said, okay, why are you telling me this? He goes, shouldn't your boss be telling me this? Shouldn't other people tell me this? <laughs> because leadership, you've got to have leadership, and that's part of it, it isn't is. it? It's it stepping up, speaking out, and making the decisions. You're so right, and that's why, I mean, the point, leadership matters. Yes, sir. Because you, you, you've got to. this logo. You, well, yeah. <laughs> but, <Strange>. yeah. <laughs> But it's, <laughs> but it's true, is that you, you've got to be willing to put out there with yes, it. Sir. I mean, this is, Mike, you know that. You know that, you know, I mean, this was a, this was a hard decision for me. <laughs> to come back and go back <laughs> in the ring and go ahead and do this. Do but, it, throw your head back in? Yeah, but I knew that, you know, I love my city. My parents have been there for 30 years. Uh -huh. You know, I love the community. I, you know, I'm involved in different aspects of the community. A lot of things that you know that I've done, not only in the Austin area, but on the state level, Right. Those are things I want to bring back to Pflugerville. Perfect example is this. You got, I'm sure you guys heard about the, um, the new plans, transportation plans that they rolled out, including having a toll road on 35 that just came out. Yeah. Well, what was interesting about the discussion is that I, I, I got invited to that, that meeting. They had, a, they had a nice little luncheon, and then they had a mm -hmm. meeting today about it. So you had people from Bastrop. You had people from Burnett County. You had people from Georgetown, Round Rock, Maynard. Marble Falls, Austin, of course, no one from Pflugerville in those discussions. And I've seen time and time again that we're not involved in these discussions. You're from Pflugerville? It's so frustrating. Yeah. yeah, and that's, <laughs> and what do you think they call me? They go, well, I, all right, Pflugerville, what do you think? And I'm I, like, I, and, I you know. <laughs> I just came from a conference just a little while ago, the Making Texas Work conference, and part of what they discussed was transportation. and. Our mayor was there, Councilman Heath was there, and four, five, six members of PCDC were there. We are involved in these things now. That's what, excellent. What, what, and why, what, why are there, and that's, and that's a great point to see what the divergence is regarding, because we need to be at the table. We need to be in the discussion. Yes. Yeah. Well, kind of what I see happening today in, in the general sense is communities and people are starting to realize that you know we're, we're not living in silos that we actually yeah. live in, we're actually on one boat we're actually in this thing together yeah. like it or not you're on one planet <laughs> but it's nice to see people starting to recognize that and, and, and understand that's important well, and thing, what's important yeah. is not our differences but what we, what we agree on and what we can work with together on not what we can argue with each other about well, I, very very true you know and you know and, and, the, hard, and the hard part is is that Realistically speaking, these are simple concepts. These are ideas where we all know it's better, you know, we're all in it together and work from there. It's getting to that point to make sure we bridge those gaps. Do yeah, you know, break those things down? Yeah. Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah. This is that's that. true. Because you know what? You really, look, look, at, look at our state. You know yes. what I mean? Look how everyone went and rallied down there. The people, you know, now, now, and, not, and not just Houston. We need Houston, you know, the resources yeah. right there. But the other Gulf Coast cities and seeing what they did from there as well. You know, it. Yeah, I'll say this. People always laugh at me, and you said that about me too as well. I always have a positive opinion, and I always look at the good in people. Things like that, you know, a reminder that you know what? In the end, people are good. They're good natured. You got to make sure don't don't subscribe to people something malice when in fact that you know what it may be a misunderstanding. Think that people come from a good area. You know, once they show you they're not from a good area, yeah. all right, there you go. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. Right there as well. But you know what? Do that. We've all experienced that, yeah. too. I mean, especially in this campaign, I think we, we, we've all seen little little incidents where people I mean, will, get, will jump nasty, on something. Did it get nasty yet? Nasty, I talked Rudy. Well, it was right after, it was right after the last campaign. <laughs> You know, this has been, you know what? I don't think your race has been nasty at yeah, all. You know, he's, 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 he, I was about to say, he, he's, he's, a good, he's a good guy. Yeah. I guess okay. he, he's a good person right there. What were you about to, were you about to say? Well... Um, but you're running for place four mm -hmm. against George Luak. Mm -hmm. um, he's a civil engineer. Uh, you're, you're a lawyer. He's, he's, a, he's a newcomer, right? 
and, and I've talked to him at length. He, he seems to call me all the time asking me how am I doing, and, you know, I give him my frank <coughs> advice. But he thinks he's going to lose to you. So you. You think you got this one in the bag? This is, what, third time? You time? know what? Like, now, it, it, everybody it, it, thinks it, you're going to win. And, but, you know, but you know what? I will, I will say this, and you've heard me say this to you. I said it, you know, behind the scenes, I said in front of you. You don't know. You don't know, and you know how it goes. I think that he's he's a great person. I think that um, you know he's he, and, and I think that's what's even better. You can say about you've got good people, good natured mm-hmm. people involved, and you really just want to go ahead and serve the community. And we'll do that. that makes a big difference. Um, you know, of course, you know, uh, you know, I'm in, in the right. I'm I'm going for the seat. I'm not going against him. And I enjoy that, but um, you know, I, I think that ultimately. But I think everybody thinks you have well. the easiest race in this. Well, you so, know, uh, <laughs> congratulations. Anthony, no race, no race is no, easy. There's no thank you. Will you there please tell no him that? Easy. I was like, wait a minute. No, people have got to vote. That's you never it. know. No, you never right, know. Right. Well, hardest, that, that's exactly what I told him. The George, hardest thing to do is to get people to the polls. Yeah. It's easy to have them say, hey, I'm going to vote for you. That'll work fine. But then they don't get out and go to the yeah, polls. They, they sit home. Getting in that booth and that's that's a different question. Yeah. So the hardest thing to do right, is well, to motivate like people to Ten the minutes. Polls. So give us your, your vision of the city. And the way I frame this is Lugerville is kind of divided with the bedroom community people, the green pastures, and get it to the small town feel, and the people that recognize the growth and want to manage the growth in some ways. Where do you fall in line in that <coughs> divide in the city? You, you want to go back to the green pastures, or do you want to accept the growth and, and, and manage it? Cows are known. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't think anyone's ever told you they want to go back to the green pastures. But, but there but, are some people. But, but what I think that people want to tell you, and you got to remember this, because, I mean, I grew up in a town where they had 400 people. And, you know, and you knew all your neighbors. And you were able to go ahead and, and ride your bikes. Okay, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. My mom said, okay, be back by 6. Be back by dinner time, and have no. a good time with that as well. That's what you can do in Pflugerville now. And people want to keep the Pflugerville that they love, the, the, mm-hmm. the friendliness, the commonalities, knowing your neighbors and walking from that. And I think that can stay in place, and I think that you can work toward that. But I think in doing so, you've got to be real stick in how you manage the growth of the city. Now, it's going to grow. Let's be honest. You know, development's going to grow. But do, how do we manage that development? And I think that's why it's so important and what's really good is, is, is protecting our green space. We've got to go ahead and strategic about our green space and what we're doing with it. Additionally speaking, if we really want to go ahead and have a conversation about where Pflugerville is going to be, not just five years or 20 years from now, we've got to stop relying on the residential tax base. We have got to go ahead and diversify our tax base. We have got to bring in the commercial businesses, and we've got to go ahead and build the infrastructure for them to develop, which will increase our sales tax revenue. And the frustrating part about a lot of discussions that I hear about these things is that people look at these things as being mutually exclusive. No, they're all part of the same tapestry. You can do all of it together. You can work on it together. You don't just have to work on one thing at one time or one thing on the other. You can do it all together with that. But if you truly want to go ahead and have the businesses that want to go ahead and be a, um, an anchor for the city, you've got to build up the infrastructure for them. You got to build out the the roadways and the wastewater and everything else from there. You know, I'm not saying make it turnkey so everyone can just show up, you know, the next day. But you know what? People don't want to have to build 18 to 24 months later. They want to at least get, you know, five, six months to go ahead and work from that. And in doing so, you'll stop having. I, I feel like every time our option is, is we want to keep our high quality of life. Because that's the reason why, let's be real. People love Flickerville because of our great schools, our high mm-hmm. quality of life, you know. And our community values and our reach. And in doing so, they, they, will, they have an expectation that we're going to keep those high-quality services where we're at. I mean, think about our, our first responders. They're top-notch. That's why, they're, you know, every time we do our studies, you know, law enforcement is, what, 93%? Mm-hmm. Fire department's around the same point right there. Mm-hmm. They love those things, but those things cost money. And when we're looking at, oh, well, we need to go ahead and build a new park, or we need to go ahead and build these, work, we look at bond elections as opposed to saying, hey, wait a minute. Let's go ahead and see about one, pooling our resources. So in fact that if in fact that you know we have three tax entities, you know I'm vice president of the fire department. So you got mm-hmm. the fire department, you got the school board, and you got the city. Well, you know what? If we're trying to build a new fire station, <coughs> so it's trying to build a new roadways, and then after that the school board wants to build you know a fifth high school, guess what's going to happen if we all do that all at once? People are just going to see their taxes go up. Oh, yeah. 
I'm, I'm we, need, we need to work together. And a crazy concept, because we all go ahead and develop our budgets around the same time, come together with our projected budgets and have a discussion about it and be strategic in what we're doing with our implementation and see where partnership matters and where we can do partnership. For example, was when we partnered with the city to help bring Costco and bring the, um, in the hospital here. We looked at it as, hey, listen, we can't do this by ourselves. We need to work together to go ahead and do this. What can you do about that? Well, okay, from the fire department standpoint, we're not in the economic development business, but we are in the people business and doing what's best for the people that we serve. And we saw that easily with the hospital and definitely with Costco and bringing up a high quality guys. Same thing goes with partnering with the ISD and looking to see about being the fire, uh, Firefighters Academy. It's because we're looking at, hey, you know what? We want people here who know the city and love the city. Why don't we go ahead and partner with a great school district, which we have here, and develop our own firefighters for the future? And, you know, college isn't for everybody. So when, in oh, fact, sure. they're able to go ahead and graduate, we'll credential these people ourselves. And guess what happens when they come out? They have a $60,000 a year job coming out of high school and working from there. If we want to go ahead and build firefighters who are dedicated and love our city, we work there. But, it go, Mike, it goes to your point when you're talking about the silos. We're not in a siloed area anymore, right. and we've got to work together on these things. And you know, and, and yeah, and you brought up the point. You know, what do I bring? What a different aspects of that? Everything I talk about, I've done. These are things I've done. I developed these relations, to those reports, and why? Because you know what? I realize we're you know we're not all by ourselves. You know, people get mad at me at times on the fire department board because they're like, Rudy. We're here, you know, for emergency services. Emergency, that's what we care about. I understand you're here, but I say, but yeah, you know what? But we're also here because of the good schools. We're also here because of the great quality work that the city of Bosch are here for. People come here for that. And when they look at their taxes, all they look at is the three of us is like, hey, this is my tax bill. What's going on right here? Yeah. You know, but you know, but when you work together and you're able to make real things, it makes all the world in the difference. Sorry, didn't mean to go <laughs> no, well, well, that's a good point. That's a good answer. People don't realize that in Texas, the city doesn't take care of fire and ambulance, right? Mm -hmm. I, I came from Michigan, New York, and the city, one of the city services, well, besides police, is the fire department mm -hmm. and the ambulance, and, and it's a separate entity. It doesn't get a lot of attention, so I appreciate you serving uh, as vice president of, of that task. Yeah. You know, it's just one more meeting. I'd be involved, too, if I knew when they had the meetings. And, you know, I don't know I don't know when the meetings are, but... First you know, Thursday every month, my friend. First <laughs> Thursday of every month? Yeah. Um, What's that? Fire department, ESD yeah, number two. ESD. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so... Um, let me ask you about this. Uh, well, we talked about the Travis County bond, and we only got about three minutes. But I think that's one good area where we can work together. What do you think about that bond proposal? There's not much in Pflugerville except for uh, Metro East Park of the soccer club. But I think that's one area where, you know, why can't you know, we can take $8 million and do a lot of good in Pflugerville? <laughs> and we don't seem to be working with them at all. They're like, well, what can we do to have their commission? And, well, let's redo the soccer field. Well, you know what? So one of the biggest things um, that I've done and we've had to do with my fellow commissioners is that we have to work with the county commissioners on a regular basis because they're ESD number two county, get county funding, get in the um, in the emergency aspects regarding that, and work together strategically to go and provide services because we actually not you know you know we operate in Pflugerville, but we also operate at Wells Branch. We also go ahead and. You know, reciprocity agreements with Maine are in a variety of different areas right there. We work together, you know, as a unit, together on these things. And that's something where I really want to see a more of a prioritization from the city council, is that working with our county commissioners and making sure that, you know, the taxes that we pay, our fair share of taxes on areas that I have right there, are brought back in the city. And, you know, before even they were going to do Northeast Metro Park, we were going to have almost 3%, that's it, 3% of this bond proposal spent here in Pflugerville. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, why, I, I, yes, I appreciate what you're doing because you know what, parks and taking care of the roads are very important. But you know what, not everything needs to be done in southwest Travis County. Right. No. You know, we're up here. What's going on on our side of the neck of the woods? And you need to go ahead and, and reach out from that. I will give Commissioner Trevelyan and Commissioner Shea credit for once they realized, um, you know, that aspect. I, I, oh, I, well, you got to give them credit. How many seconds uh, you got? I've got about 30, about another minute, I believe. 
Oh, okay. Uh, Maybe you want to wrap my, it up. No, I got to I got, <laughs> oh. I, I I okay. thank my guests for being here, especially you, Rudy. But I want you to come back and talk about those points. You, you did something for the State Bar about how to survive the police stop. Oh, the community police. Boy, you remember. <laughs> yeah, you and you know, start. and you remember how I used the Pflugerville Police Department yeah, as my yeah. example. Because it's yeah. like, that's the best police department that you, you can do with. You got to come back. I've been, <laughs> want, I've been wanting to run you down for that. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah. I want to thank Victor for coming. I just want to thank you for coming, Rudy, even though you had a short, short, short leash on this one. But I want to have to have you guys back after the election. Love to.